in no hurry to go despite living in a danger zone. Officials ordered residents in this mining village to leave after yet another landslide killed and buried villagers. And it's not the first time. A known geohazard site, this area already has two existing factors out of three needed to contribute to a disaster. A steep slope and soft loam soil. But wanting to cash in on the gold rush, Miguel Acayag moved here anyway. Her home, barely spared by the rain-triggered landslide, is now being dismantled to be rebuilt further up the slope. The police now watch over the evacuation to make sure people leave the area. But most here don't intend to go too far away from the small mining shafts that have made them richer than they've ever been. They make as much as $85 a week in a country where 40% of the people live on less than $2 a day. It's so much easier to earn living here than elsewhere. I can get cash in hand every day. Hundreds of other small-scale miners are also moving their homes to safer ground for the rainy season. All of them came hoping the tunnels would lead them out of poverty. Largely unregulated and with poor safety standards, small-scale mining is considered harmful to the environment and dangerous for the miners. The government says the presence of hundreds of unsupported shallow mine tunnels may have contributed to the fatal landslide. In fact, Margaret, that is not a unique situation in the Philippines. It's happening in almost all a dozen provinces already in the Philippines. That's why we're quite worried. The issue of small-scale mining, I believe, is just uh, is, is also a social issue. It's not just an environmental issue. For now, temporary housing is being prepared for the displaced, and communities are working together. They all came willing to risk it all for high rewards. And the choice, they say here, is simple. Either risk death by starvation, or risk death trying to stave it off. Margot Tigas, Al Jazeera, Compostela Valley, Southern Philippines.